Hey everyone, it's Flagfire. Today we're looking at a World War II game that popped up out of nowhere called Land of War The Beginning. It's an indie title, so let's see how it stacks up against some of the big boys. Might surprise you. Before we get to that, I want to talk to you about Gimme, a new online platform for game reviews. I'll be uploading a review there once a month if you're curious what other games I play outside of Battlefield, breaking down some of the key pros and cons of each. The review for Crossout is live right now, and I'm looking forward to the next one, which I will say will probably be the Magic the Gathering-styled World War II card game called Cards. On Gimme, you can also ask me questions about the games directly, so click the link in the description to check out the latest review and check back regularly. That said, back to business. Do you remember the old Call of Duty and Medal of Honor campaigns? I mean, the old ones, the classics, before all of the cutscenes and you were just focused on the story at hand, completing objectives and playing a small part in a much larger machine. There was a sort of honesty and rawness to it. It felt real, plausible, and honestly, I used to think that those days were gone. Enter Land of War The Beginning. This is a video game true to its roots, an homage to some of the FPS classics like Call of Duty and Medal of Honor. If you're like me, these games were fixtures of your childhood. Developer MS Games and Land of War bring that nostalgia back in the best way, even if it isn't perfect. Unlike other contemporaries like Enlisted or Hell Let Loose, Land of War is a single-player only experience, which means they can focus on telling a story, and it's actually a unique one. The Nazi invasion and occupation of Poland. This is a perspective that we rarely get to see in video games, especially FPS games. It's kind of that often ignored or taboo part of the World War II era. While it is a bit of a solitary experience, fans of hardcore World War II multiplayer games will appreciate some of the attention to detail here. Developers actually traveled to battle locations, took reference photos, studied books, visited local museums, and even spoke to site custodians. It is incredibly ambitious for such a small studio production, and we'll talk a little bit more about that in a minute. Gameplay-wise, Land of War resurrects that classic run-and-gun feel of old-school Call of Duty. They also shed complicated cinematics in favor of slideshows or briefings in the field. Enemies are tough and they will make you pay for bad tactical decisions. There are some things that the game does exceptionally well. Personally, I enjoyed an arsenal filled with somewhat uncommon weapons. You'll find the Moore submachine gun, the WZ-38, Becker shotgun, and the WZ-35 anti-tank rifle, among others. Land of War also actually integrates some vehicle gameplay, reasonably well I might add, showcasing some ground vehicles like the TKS tankette, the 7TP tank, and even an armored train. For aircraft, you get to play as a rear and bow gunner on a PZL-37 and even dogfight in a PZL-P11. It's a real treat to see these vehicles and weapons come to life in-game, especially because they never really get the love that they deserve from mainstream developers. All of this gets a boost from the environments in the game. Developers did a great job recreating iconic locations and getting the right feel for the time frame. So, for example, the Warsaw Gas Works is faithfully recreated. There's also a section on the Hell Peninsula, which is wonderfully done. Some sections are heavy with atmosphere, while others encapsulate the naivety of Polish forces fighting early in the war. The combat in Land of War is at its best when you're fighting waves of enemies. There are some really memorable moments when you're fighting in the Battle of Makro with an anti-tank rifle or fending off wave after wave of enemy dive bombers with a bow force. There's also a great section of the game where you'll hold down a house with a light machine gun and it feels particularly rewarding. Weapons like bolt-action rifles also feel hefty and powerful and I really enjoyed that. For vehicle gameplay, I absolutely loved the on-rails throwback of being in a Jeep on a machine gun, winding up behind enemy lines and having to get yourself out of a pickle. It's a real nice tongue-in-cheek reference to Call of Duty. The aerial gunning sections were also a ton of fun and let you practice deflection shooting. 
Another highlight is the game's soundtrack, which I have to say is phenomenal for an indie title. For all its strengths, there are some shortcomings. Land of War struggles with the same ambition that makes it a worthwhile experience. The graphics aren't really anything to write home about, and enemy AI can be both incredibly lethal and unforgiving, yet simultaneously dumb. Latter sections of the game are difficult, and some players unfamiliar with early Call of Duty games will find them a little bit frustrating. There is a bit of trial and error involved as you try to figure out exactly what it is you are supposed to do to survive. Ammo and health can be scarce, and you'll probably bump into the occasional bug. The final battle is particularly tough as you fight an overwhelming number of enemies with diminishing ammo. I will also say it's definitely a game best played in the original Polish language with English subtitles, as the voice acting for the English version is definitely lacking. But perhaps the biggest issue is the game's lack of focus. Developers take you all over Poland. You start the game on the front lines during the German invasion at Makra, then travel to the Palace of Warsaw, followed by the Campinos Forest, and lastly to the Hell Peninsula. There's a great variety of gameplay, but it unfortunately fractures the narrative. Certain sections of the game seem a bit out of place. I can think of one instance where you're inside the Warsaw sewers and you wind up kind of tripping on some kind of sewer gas. Uh, I'll give them points for creativity here. The gameplay was interesting to be sure, but it doesn't fit with the more grounded nature of the rest of the game. There are also some creative liberties taken that may bother some of the bigger history nerds, but uh, you know what, it is a game after all. On the plus side, I have to say it has been a long time since I played a game and actually didn't know what I was going to see next, so you can kind of look at this as both a positive and a negative. I feel I do need to point out that this game is built by something like 10 developers, and for what it's worth, they did a good job highlighting a theater of war that never gets a proper show. MS Games is also based in Poland, so it is a topic that is close to their heart, and they are clearly passionate about it. If you're someone looking for that classic Call of Duty experience and you don't mind some occasional frustration or a bug, it is a wonderful trip down memory lane that actually takes you someplace new and offers some challenges along the way. Land of War is available on Steam for about 20 bucks. It took me about six hours or so to get through the campaign, and again, there is no multiplayer component, so take that into account. I'm curious though, what do you think about what you've seen from Land of War in the comments? Would it be something you'd like to try out? What about it showcasing some of the earliest World War II battles? Tell me down below. If you enjoyed this video, leave a like, if not a dislike. Make sure to subscribe and tap the bell for the latest videos. If you want to support the channel, keep your money, share this video, and as always, thanks for watching.